basically we in our first part we created this little waves on water scenario and um added a little um blur effect on it to create this little like steam coming from water or whatever scenario we got going here uh, in part two we created this audio reactive geo and um whoops that is not the right button we created this and the cool thing about this is you can put any other geo in front of this now right so we could go into a box and we could take the box and then push it in here <clears throat> and it's not going to do anything as much fun but um you could basically bring in some other poly models and stuff like that and kind of mess around with it so so that's all cool the other thing too is i added this noise in part two and i just wanted to kind of bring this into this because i want to give a little bit of like organic life to it right so i'm just going to change my amplitude on this to like 0.1 and it just kind of just like kind of moves it around a little bit. So it's not as stagnant. So there's like some flexibility. Um, the other thing too is that we have this like audio file coming in, right? So the cool thing is we can take this now and we can do some other things where we're going to add a, um, a beat. And this is another thing that we haven't really discussed, but I'm gonna discuss it now. And we can take this beat and we can take our audio into it, right? And basically it's now ramping to the beat of our audio. And it really depends on like where you wanna put this, right? Should I put it behind the leg, you know, and then create something so it's in time um, and I'm already doing some math, so I'm just gonna do it that way. Um, let me put this up, let's say here. <clears throat> and what you can do is what I like about this little thing is we can create like other multiples of it, right? So if I do four, now I have four different things that are going on here. And I can do like some offsets on this, like some random offsets. So they're kind of like changing around. So we have the same type of scenario with our beat, but we're doing some offsets in our randoms. Um, so now I have some more values to play with. I'm going to add a null at the end of this. Um, actually, I'm going to do a rename first, just so we, in case we ever put anything and change this out into something else, like an OSC value or something like that, we're going to change it. So I'm going to just name this, um, uh, I don't know, like value one. Two, three, four, and let's see, let's just do it like this. So then we have one, two, and three, and four. I could have typed in value one, two, three, four, or all the rest of the stuff, or done some other things um, to shift it around. Um, but we'll just keep these as one, two, and three, and four. And what I could do again is if I wanted to create like something with this noise, right? I could take this value one and shift it to my amplitude. <clears throat> and you can see now it's like kind of like pushing in space based on that. But that still has like um, a little bit more than what I'm going for here. So this just gives you the, again, the ability to adjust things and play with some stuff um you know some other values in here right so like what do i want to do and how do i want to change this um you know do i want to change you know how much it's gonna go uh different types of things like that uh what is the roughness of it you know like is it going to is it going to kind of push to a certain a certain level so why don't we do we'll do a roughness for this one uh i kind of like that and change this to 1.5 so it still has some flexibility, right? Still kind of going through, still going through our, our, our colors and our ramp. Um, the other thing that I could do too 
is like in my sphere, you can see I have like the frequency of three. So if I wanted to change this and um, what I'll do is I'll add a math here. And since I'm referencing this off this other one, you know, it's okay because this is coming then behind the chain. And I'm going to change this to, um, from a range of zero to one, I'm going to change this from, let's say, three, or let's say two, to like four. <clears throat> so I have another value of like, uh, now you can see as it's changing up, it's going to those things. But I want to, I don't want all these like in-betweens. So in my... Uh, math, I'm going to change my integer to round. So it's always going to just be jumping up by a certain level, right? And um, so if I change this to my facet and add this um, value up here, or not my facet, um, to my sphere, I'm going to add this value right here into my frequency. And you can see now like my geo switching a little bit, right? So it's changing, basically adding more and more polygons and kind of switching that around, which has a very cool effect to me. And this was like kind of what I was looking for and what I did in, in the example. Um, and again, you can kind of play with things, right? So you could like uh, adjust different things in here, adjust, like maybe my wireframe, instead of being uh, just red, I want to start to reference these colors. So my wireframe is like going to change colors, you know, based on some of these. Um, so it's going to cycle through um, some different colors, which I could also reference like a whole nother um, top and change some stuff. But just to keep this, you know, kind of moving forward as we are in part three of this tutorial. Um, I'm going to position this through, right? And like, that's what I got. Um, so that is kind of what's happening, right? And um, my lag was kind of pushing an error to that. So then I just kind of pulled it off the top. But you can see now it's a little bit more, um, it's kind of pushing a little bit more based off of like, it's a little bit jerky and that's why the lag kind of gives it a little bit of a smoothness but you're just going to see this from time to time of like it's looking for stuff and it's kind of like uh it's not always seen everything complete um but it's okay i'm fine with it um for right now um so we have this and what we really want to do is we want to take these two and kind of like merge them together. And I could have built this in there and I said I did it for a different reason is I have this like little blur effect on here. So what I want to do for this is I'm going to take this and um, do some other adjustments. And I'm going to take this other one that I built. And since I already built two of them, I'm just going to delete this. Right. So now I have these two operators right here. And I'm going to then composite these together. I'm going to put this one actually on top. And I'm going to put this on an over. And there we go. And that geo is massive, right? So um, we can go in this operator. And this is why I put this like transform in here to like uh, switch out the scale of it. But you know, it'd be cool is since we're out here, why don't we make another value within our base to be able to adjust this like from the outside instead of going in, right? So I'm going to right click on here and I'm gonna do customize component and I'm going to add another page name and I'm going to add this as transform. Right. Uh, when I add that page, I'm going to add another value in here because I know I want to make my my transform and I'm going to say uh, scale. And I'm going to keep this as a float so I have some flexibility 
And um, once I do that, I'm going to hit add parameter. And you can see without going into too much detail, I'm just adding another aspect of this. And you can see like right now, right in here, and maybe I should have spelled transform right. Um, so I'm going to go back into transform because this will drive me crazy. So I'm just going to delete this back out. Um, and I have no idea what just happened there. I'm going to name this transform. I'm going to add the page. I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to put this as um, a scale and add the parameter. Um, and then just close this out. And you can see right, right now here, I have this little scale thing. So if I take this and I right click on this and I say copy parameter, I go inside the node into my transform and on my uniform scale, click over here and I hit a uh, uh, paste reference, right? It's zeroed out because outside in this whole thing, my scale is set to like uh, nothing. So if I start to scale this up, you can see now I'm kind of scaling this in space and I'm scaling it over here, right? So that's pretty exciting. And, um, you know, that's what kind of, again, what I was looking for is just like, here's an easy way to kind of scale something. Um, and you'll see like in some of the other stuff that I had uh, specifically with my reference of um, for my example is I was having this ball kind of rotate a little bit. So I added another transform in here and I'm gonna put this behind it, right? So I'm gonna insert a transform and I kind of had it like uh, rotating to a certain level of like spinning, you know, based on the music. So I could take one of these values again from my little beat um, that I have going through a math and, but I would just have to do like some computational data on this, right? And say, okay, what is happening here? Like, how am I gonna position this? Um, you know, do I wanna make it bounce? Because I could take this value right here and put this on the translate um, and you can see like it's it's shifting the wrong way because the math is doing too much. So if I take one of these earlier values, and I'm just going to push this on the Y instead. So now it's kind of like floating up um, to a certain extent, like as it's going through, um, you know, picking up with the music. Right. So if you look back here, it's like the ball is like levitating on. Uh, itself but again it's like it's doing too much so this is where you get into things and you're saying okay I'm taking this value it's going from 0 to 1 this is a big number up here um, what can I do right so let's say I go divide by 2 you can see now it's like not moving as much right so it's doing a division so it's taking that number and it's saying, I'm going to then, you know, kind of slow that down, right? So I'm not going that full distance. So I'm just going to do divide by four. And it's going to kind of give, again, that little bit of a bounce um, to the music. And it's not like going like way up off the screen. Um, but the other thing is, it's kind of like it's going too far off. So that's like one of the benefits of having these like double transforms is in my first one, I can take this and I can lower this down a bit. So let's say I go into negative 0.5. So it's going to start at a lower place. And if I go back out, it's kind of like starting on the water and then rising up. Okay. So the one thing is this is like, obviously this has some effect on it and this one doesn't. Um, but, you know, it's how do I change some of that? And like, how do I also like make it like partly like it was rolling before. So I want to make it roll. Um, so what I can do, and I'll just kind of break this out for a second here. Um, if I go over here, 
and I've done this before. I'm going to split this panel. And it never wants to grab it right off the bat. Um, we're going to slide this over. View this as a top viewer. I'm going to turn this on. And I'm going to go over here and switch my display to uh, background tops off, right? So now I can see like uh, what's happening over there. And as I go into these um, nodes, it's still playing over there. So now I know like I can adjust it. The kind of reference since I'm using like two different base um, containers, right? So, um, you know, it's again, it's just kind of like pushing that. Um, and I think the other thing too is like what I look at this is maybe I want it to sit back a little bit so I can go to like negative two and that's way too far. So we're going to go to like negative 0.5 and actually that is the wrong way. So I'm going to go to 0.5 and we're positioning in space. So it's again, it's just playing with these values, right? And being like, okay, how do I want this to sit? Like, where do I want it to sit in space? So it's again, it's just like looking at certain things, like what makes sense to you? What makes sense for your like why statement for some of these things? Or like, why am I doing this? Um, but I did say, that I want to do a little bit of a rotation on this. And so I could go here and say, okay, I'm going to spin this. And that's what I, I kind of want to do. So I'm going to do our wonderful ABS times dot seconds. <clears throat> and now it's kind of like rotating through itself, but it's not doing it like uh, fast enough, you know, for what I was hoping. So, um, once I find the, uh, there we go, the times button, I'm going to say times two. Right, so is it moving fast enough? I don't know. It still has some movement. You know, it's still doing some things. Um, so it's, again, playing with numbers, right? Anyways, to keep this ball rolling, uh, no pun intended there. <laughs> I guess I put one, but the, so we talked about in class and I said to add some, if you go into palette and you have, um, some image filters, these are again, some different things that you can play with. And, um, I'm going to use a bloom in this case. So I'm going to drag the bloom out here. And, um, once I do that, I'm going to then take this, push this into the bloom. And it's going to give me like this other cool little aspect with it, right? So it's given a little bit more of life into it. And it's kind of giving you this like uh, almost like translucent, right? Um, and these these are great. Again, these are all the different things that, um, you know, someone has made in a, basically a whole nodal network inside of something. Um, and it's some things that people use like kind of common um you know to kind of position that stuff so the other thing too is um what i'm just going to push this again at the back of the chain and um you know so i have some other things in case i do some other references and things like this but um you know that's kind of a cool effect so this video was short and this video is kind of just the capstone of this part series to um, show some different things and how things are transitioning in spaces. Um, you can honestly, you know, again, that's the beauty of touch designer and everything like that is you can, you can just keep uh, messing with this, right? And keep positioning different things and keep, um, you know, changing things uh, in your parameters. But we'll leave it for here. Um, because this is kind of a cool effect. And, um, you know, that's what we'll call it. So um, one of the things, too, I guess, I have to remember is once I turn this off, I want to turn it back on if I want to see it. Um, but that is where we stand. So this was the little effect. And um, similar to what I did for my example, um, but make it your own and enjoy.